Super Mario Maker 2 has a lot of different items to give Mario different abilities. These are of course the power-ups like mushrooms, fire flowers, etc, which are all super useful. However, I wanted to look at the other items Mario can wear or ride. These aren't necessarily power-ups, however they give Mario new abilities. For example, items like the shell mitts, the headgear in 3D World, and rideable items like Yoshi or the clown cars each give Mario new abilities but aren't truly classed as power-ups. There are 22 items like this in the game, each of which are on screen now, which I decided would be fun to rank today. Also, there's a decent chance I may have overlooked one or two, so if I did, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'll put a pinned comment saying where I think that item would belong in the ranking, if I did miss one of course. Now how are these being ranked exactly? Well, I'm ranking them more in the perspective of how useful they can be in making levels. Stuff like unique traits and ease of use are major factors in these rankings. This list is not ranking them based on how useful they are to a player trying to beat a level. So even though the Fire Clown Car, for example, is super strong and useful to a player trying to beat a level, we're looking at how useful that item is in building a fun and unique level, meaning it may or may not end up being high on the list. Hopefully that's not terribly confusing, but I'm sure you'll understand the concept as the video continues. This list was developed of course by my own decisions, but also I had a bit of help from my members on my Discord server as well. Link to join that is in the description, and also while I'm plugging, I might as well say, my Twitter is also in the description as well. That being said, this is just our and mostly my own opinion, so it's perfectly fine to disagree. If you do enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe, but with that being said, let's jump right into the ranking of all the wearable and writable items in Super Mario Maker 2. Starting us off here is the Koopa Car. This is an original item made for Super Mario Maker 2 and unfortunately, it really does not work great for levels. Its mechanics are pretty simple. It allows Mario to move a bit faster at the cost of some startup time. It will kill or hurt most enemies it rams into. It can hit and activate blocks and switches by ramming into them. However, you can only do it three times as the car will break after three hits. And finally, uh, you can honk your horn, I guess? Now what I've said may not seem so bad, however these uses are extremely limiting. For one, it's very hard to make the car go across complex or difficult jumps as the car comes to a complete stop when turning around. The only way to avoid this is using springs, however this just makes it quite a bit easier. There's just not much variety in the stuff you can make with this. If you've played one or two car levels, you've pretty much played them all. On top of being quite unhelpful for cool levels, I just genuinely don't like controlling the thing either. Even though it is faster, the startup just takes such a long time that most of the time it's not even worth it unless there's a clear condition. This item for some reason as well can't be placed down without the Koopa inside of it, which can make some setups with this very annoying. You could do something like this to get it without the Koopa, however just letting us place it down without the Koopa Troopa would be much better. I don't have much more to say on this item other than it's repetitive and limiting along with being unfun to actually use. All of this combined gives the Koopa car last place on this list at the number 22 spot. Next is the first of seven Goomba themed items on this list. That's a lot, however instead of being some sort of shoe, this one is actually a mask. The Goomba mask's main ability is that when worn, enemies won't attack you. And that goes for every single enemy. While yes, this is near the bottom of this list, it is kind of cool to see how these enemies work with the Goomba mask equipped. I think my favorite might be the bonsai bills in the background, just no longer firing. However, aside from looking cool, this is honestly just quite useless. I'm seriously having a hard time thinking of a good use for this thing. The only thing I could really think of is maybe needing to keep this item on from the start of a section with tight spike jumps or something, so that the path isn't closed by a piranha creeper contraption in the end. But even then, that's barely even using the mask's abilities. I think the best use of this thing has to be in the Ninji speedrun level, based on the DLC headgear, which is by far my favorite Ninji by the way. Here it's used to make Piranha Creeper stop moving so that you can get by faster. That's all it was, not horribly impressive or creative, but it's the best use of this item I've seen. This item is really just too good at its job at making enemies stop, that it's genuinely quite useless for making something complex and creative. The only time I can ever see me personally using this item is if I'm making some sort of level that uses all of the 3D World hats, and even then, it'd get the shortest segment. So, for being nearly useless, the Goomba Mask takes the 21st spot on this list. Another 3D World item makes the list here with the Red POW Box. This item is quite simple. Mario gets a POW block placed on his head and can activate a Red POW effect around him by jumping into a ceiling. Mario can do this three times before the item will leave Mario's head. 
This red power ring will kill or damage enemies, along with breaking some blocks and activating nearby question blocks or even other POWs. So what exactly is the problem with this item then? Well, it's pretty simple. We already have the red POW block. Pretty much any time you want to use the red POW box, you could just replace it with a normal red POW block with a few changes. I do think that this item does have some fun uses though. For example, looking back at the ninja again, this part right here is quite fun to do, quickly breaking the bricks as fast as possible while jumping in the correct spots. I could see these working well in speedrun levels as well. Then again, you could just always use a normal red POW block. So even though this item is fairly fun to use, it's generally quite useless and if it were to be removed, we would have no trouble replacing it. I do still find it better than the Goomba Mask and Koopa Car though, only because I feel like this can be actually used quite decently. It's just that this item has a replacement that was already in the game, so that gives this the number 20 spot on this list. Now from this point on, the list became extremely hard to put together. Nearly all the items from here up are incredibly useful for a number of different levels, so I switched up the list constantly as I wasn't 100% sure on many of my choices, especially on these middle options. But anyways, let's jump into number 19 with the Goomba Shoe and Stiletto. These items are the Yoshi replacement for the older themes, Mario 1 and 3. These give you the ability to jump on or walk over items that you may not have been able to before, and you are able to make higher and further jumps by jumping out of them midair. And that's really just about it. They'll also give you another hit point like the Goomba Mask and Pow Block 2. Their best uses are for parkour type levels, as jumping is really what they're best at, or traditional levels. They could also be nice for maybe getting secrets in levels that contain them, since they aren't really too overpowered. The most interesting type of jump with them is easily jumping on saws, as depending on how you hit them, you'll fly off of them differently, which is really cool. One negative though is again, you can't place this without the Goomba for some reason, like the Koopa car. I don't find this one nearly as bad though as a startup for getting a Koomba shoe is basically non-existent as you basically are able to move right away. A similar setup though can also be used here with a bomb in the middle of two bricks with the bottom brick being winged that will instantly blow up to give the player a shoe. Now this spot on the list only contains their small variants as the other ones each have their own places here on the list. As far as I'm aware, the Goomba Shoe and Stiletto, while small, have no differences, so I grouped them together to avoid being redundant. Since these are just the basic ones, the ones with more traits will be higher up on the list. However, as of now, the Goomba Shoe and Stiletto take the 19th spot on this list for being solid items that are helpful for traditional levels and a few other types of levels. This entry here will actually cover two different places on the list, since the points apply to both items. These spots will go to the Fire Yoshi from Mario World and the Fire Yoshi from Mario U. This is basically just a Goomba shoe, however it now has the ability to shoot out fire, with the Mario U variant able to do a ground pound and flutter jump. I find that these two will be pretty much useful in the exact same scenarios as the Goomba shoe, parkour and traditional levels, with a few more using its unique fire spinning ability. Their fire can interact with many things like the bombs and frozen coins, which can lead to some interesting scenarios. The fire will also go through walls as well, meaning that the fire will be able to reach places the player normally can't. This item is bordering on being too good for traditional levels, however if the level is designed around Fire Yoshi then it could easily work. Now it seems like I've only got praises for Fire Yoshi so far, so why is it so low? Well it's simply because normal Yoshis are able to spit out fire as well if they eat it, along with being able to do many other things with their tongue. Now unlike the Red Pal Box, the Fire Yoshis still have their place, since they can shoot fire infinitely and more quickly. However, it still gets overshadowed pretty much in every other way by normal Yoshi. Now you may be wondering why Fire Yoshi is taking up two spots. Well that's because I feel like the Mario U version and World version act differently enough that I thought they should be separated. In this case, the Mario U Yoshi has just more abilities than the World one, as it can flutter jump and ground pound. The Mario World one doesn't really have anything special to make up for those, so I think that it belongs in the number 18 spot, while the Mario U one will take number 17. Okay, so from here on, the list got even more hard to make. Genuinely everything within the next 10 spots on this list shifted around at least once while scripting. Man, this was so hard to make. Well, anyways, I decided to give this spot to the cannon box. This hat allows you to shoot out cannonballs. I mean, I mean, obviously. These cannonballs are able to kill enemies, break bricks, inactivate certain blocks and switches. You can also charge it up to shoot longer distances. Now, this all seems pretty good, right? Well, it does actually. This would have been an extremely helpful and useful item. 
had it not been exclusive to 3D World, which already has the superior boomerang flower. Sure, there are some differences. Boomerang flowers can collect coins, while cannonballs can only make them fall. Boomerangs damage some bosses less than cannonballs do. Cannonballs are a bit quicker to throw out. And cannonballs can be used in cars. These differences though are so small that in many scenarios you might as well use the boomerang flower. It's really disappointing that the cannon box doesn't say destroy hard blocks to make it more distinct. This would have been such a useful item though in literally any other game style since they don't really have a good cannon box equivalent. The closest one I guess is Link's arrows but even then they don't destroy bricks and they fly in an arc. So even though this is a mechanically sound power-up, it being limited to 3D World where there's already an item similar to it, puts it at the number 16 spot. Maybe someday it'll go to other themes, but for now, it's unfortunately stuck in 3D World. Alrighty, onto our second Goomba Shoe variant, the Big Goomba Shoe. Also, there are six different types of Goomba Shoes, so be prepared for that. Anyways, to keep these segments brief, I'm only going to really be talking about what makes these variants special or different. The big variant of the Goomba Shoe allows Mario to ground pound onto the floor which lets him activate things like switches and question mark blocks from above. Interestingly though, this won't break bricks. On top of that, the ground pound will also release these things from the side that will actually kill enemies. This item is pretty useful for many different scenarios like having secrets behind a wall of munchers, or pretty much all the uses I said for the normal Goomba Shoe. They can also be used as feet for mechs. This also applies to normal Goomba Shoes as well, but I just thought I'd bring it up here. The final neat thing that I was actually told about while scripting this is if you get a fire clown car with a big Goomba shoe, your fireballs will actually become more powerful. Now the reason this is fairly low is that the stiletto version of the big Goomba shoe is quite a bit better as it has a lot more abilities. However, sometimes not having too many abilities can also be good and helpful, which is why this is still at least up here on the list. So for being fairly useful, but having a better version, the big Goomba shoe gets number 15. Now we've got the next 3D World headgear item, the Bullet Bill Mask. This will allow Mario to jet forward horizontally for a limited amount of time. If Mario hits a wall, he will act as a mini explosion which can destroy bricks or activate things. However, Mario will lose the mask. This item is fairly interesting and there are definitely a few interesting scenarios it could be used in, like needing to avoid walls or spikes. The lack of movement upward can be both a strength and a weakness. On the one hand, it makes this a little less overpowered, but the downside is that it can make some areas less interesting since moving horizontally or down are your only real options. I could see this being used in some sort of interesting speed or kaizo levels, especially with you maybe needing to charge at a wall but time it just right so you don't lose your mask but instead wall jump off. While the 3D world style is of course more limited than the others, unlike the cannon box, this theme doesn't really have a good equivalent for this item which makes it more useful. What else can I really say other than it's a pretty solid item, so it takes number 14 on this list. So you remember how like a few entries ago I told you to be prepared for more Goomba Shoes? Well these next three entries are all Goomba Shoe types, so if you aren't ready, I warned you. Anyways, the Winged Goomba Shoe and Stiletto take this spot. These will pretty much give you the abilities of Yoshi's Flutter Jump, which can lead to more difficult but interesting parkour. When used with mechs, it will also give them a more unique jump as well. These work great for traditional levels as well since they're small and not too overpowered. Well that's about it for these guys who get number 13. Next is the Big Goomba Stiletto. This has all the abilities of the Big Goomba Shoe with a few more abilities like being able to break many different types of blocks on the way down. This can be quite useful for more interesting level designs and secrets as well. The reason this one is so much higher is I feel like the new abilities of destroying blocks adds a lot to them. Also, going through tall bill blasters also looks really cool, so this gets the number 12 spot. Our final Goomba Shoe variant for now is the Big Winged Goomba Shoe. This has all the abilities of the winged and big Goomba Shoes combined. There's not really much more to say here other than its later stiletto variant is better, bringing this down to number 11 on this list. Bow down before the awesome might of... This guy who's carrying the real contestant... That's right, our next spot goes to the Lakitu Cloud. This item will allow Mario to fly around freely until the cloud disappears. Now at a first glance, this may just seem like a worse clown car to some of you, and since I'm taking relevancy into consideration, why do I still put it up here? While the cloud is probably the least used item on this list due to the previously mentioned clown cars, however, they actually behave fairly differently. The timer and smaller hitbox of the cloud can lead to some more tight or fast-paced scenarios. 
They also don't get dizzy when they touch a spike, which can also be helpful. Now the way the cloud acts with Mario is great and all, but this is really one of our first items here that also interact with enemies. Most enemies can be placed inside of clouds, where they will hover and stay above Mario for the entire level until they're defeated. Putting things like fire piranha plants can have Mario need to avoid their fire for a whole level. Putting wings on them will also make them change their patterns, making the cloud move much more unpredictably. The way the enemies move and attack in clouds are also different from clown cars. For example here, a setup like this wouldn't work with a clown car as they move too slow and towards Mario vertically. However, using a cloud they'll jump right into Mario making this much more possible. This also isn't including the Lakitu that they'll usually come with, who can throw down many different items. I'm not sure if I should class Lakitu with the Cloud's abilities, but I thought I should mention it. Also, unlike Clown Cars, items can't fall into clouds. They need to be placed in them from the Maker screen, which can be a good or bad thing depending on the level. Finally, unlike the Goomba Shoes or Koopa Car, this can finally be placed down without needing Lakitu. This is so incredibly helpful, and I have no clue why this is an only Lakitu Cloud thing, but I'm grateful nonetheless. So yes, while it is a bit similar to the clown car, it has enough differences to make it still quite useful in making levels in its own scenarios, giving it the number 10 spot on this list. We've come to our final 3D World item, the Propeller Box. The power-up allows Mario to propel himself upward three times before needing to land on the ground. Of the hats, this one is probably my favorite. The only other flight item in 3D World is the Bullet Bill Mask, however it is completely powerless when trying to move upwards. The three boosts allow this to have a good amount of verticality and horizontal movement. I can see this being used in many levels where you have to propel at just the right moment to get across big gaps or maybe avoid obstacles. This unfortunately doesn't work great in traditional levels, as this is just a bit overpowered, however it can be used to great effects in other types of levels. Maybe it could even be combined with the Bullet Bill Mask to create interesting Don't Touch the Ground levels. For having a unique mechanic for a theme that really needed it, this will take the number 9 spot on the list. We've made it! The final Goomba Shoe variant is here! This is of course the big winged Goomba Stiletto. This has all the abilities of a winged Goomba Shoe and a big stiletto, meaning it has the most abilities of any Goomba Shoe variant. This in turn makes it the most useful choice. However, it doesn't make the others completely useless. Sure, you could do more with the big winged Goomba Stiletto, but sometimes you want to have maybe a little less abilities as well. Either way though, since this is probably the best of the best Goomba Shoe, it takes the number 8 spot on this list. The Clown Car is up next here. This was the item that changed in the rankings by far the most, but I think this spot is good for it. This will allow Mario to fly around freely throughout a level for as long as he wants. If it comes in contact with spikes, then it will become dizzy and start to move around randomly around the level. Of course, what's probably its biggest aspect is that it can have a ton of different things riding in them. This can provide for a lot of unique scenarios, and this isn't just limited to enemies. Pretty much anything affected by gravity can ride in clown cars, and control them like power-ups or even coins that were knocked down by POWs. Unlike the cloud, you can actually throw items into the clown car to make it move, which can be helpful in puzzle scenarios. Boss fights are another place where this shines, as it'll make many fights much more interesting and will also give some bosses, like Bowser Jr. for example, different attack patterns. These are also quite helpful in many different contraptions as well. This isn't a tips and tricks video on these, so I won't go super in depth, but things like randomizers, don't look left machines, etc. wouldn't be possible without them. Allowing them to activate no blocks is also another huge plus. These also act like bumpers that move towards Mario, so that's another use for them right there. Its only real downside is that traditional levels, aside from use in boss fight, just don't really work with it as it's just too powerful, however this is helpful in so many other different types. For all of their uses in many different level types, the clown car is going to get number 7 on this list. Oh yeah, and please, never use this in a nighttime airship level. It moves so slow, it genuinely gives me a headache. Please never do this, I'll boo ev any level that has a required clown car in a nighttime airship. I hate it so much, please don't do this. The variation of the clown car, the fire clown car, is my next choice here. This allows you to do anything a normal one can do, however this time you or your enemies inside can actually shoot out fireballs. If you charge it up, these fireballs can even break bricks, hard blocks, and other things. These are quite useful for shooter type levels, as you have to avoid projectiles while shooting your own. If you have a fire flower, you can even shoot out three at a time. So with that said, it seems like this is better in every way than the normal clown car. So why is the normal clown car still high up? 
Well, even though the Fire Clown car can still work in many contraptions, it will occasionally pause to shoot fireballs, meaning that there are still quite a few times where a normal one is preferred. I still do think the Fire Clown car is better though with its new shooter capabilities, so it gets the number 6 spot on this list. Kicking off our top 5, we have the Drybone Shell. This is of course based off the best Mario character Dry Bones. Dry Bones for Smash. I tried to make sure my Dry Bones bias wasn't getting in the way of my ranking here, though I think this is still a good spot for it. The Dry Bones shell allows Mario to ride over any liquid, be it water, lava, or poison. This also lets you walk on and jump off of certain items that you couldn't before, similar to the Goomba Shoe. If down is pressed in the air, this will allow Mario to do a ground pound in any style that has this item. Finally, if down is pressed on the ground, Mario can crumble up into a pile of bones where he becomes invincible to attacks and can also go through things like bumpers. With all these abilities and unique ones at that, there are a ton of different ways you can use this. You can have Mario time when he has to get out of his crumbled state, maybe you could hide some secrets with the ground pound mechanic, or maybe you could even make a survival room where Mario has to try and stay down to avoid thwomps hitting P-switches. This also of course lets Mario ride on lava and poison, which can open up many new types of different paths and ways to build levels. As its name suggests as well, it can also act as a shell. This works a bit differently than a normal shell though, as it can only be used once, which in some cases can be more helpful. I'm happy that they gave it its own unique mechanic like this. That way you have a reason to prefer it than, say, another different type of shell. For its many uses, and of course being based off the best boy Dry Bones, the Dry Bones shell takes 5th place on our list. This will be another segment that contains two entries, Yoshi from Mario World and Yoshi from Mario U. These each have the same abilities as Fire Yoshi, minus of course the fire, which is instead replaced with a tongue. This is much more helpful in most scenarios, as it allows Yoshi to eat, oh boy let's go through all of these, Coins, big coins, red coins, mushrooms, fire flowers, cape feathers, propeller mushrooms, pea balloons, super acorn stars, one ups, other Yoshi eggs, galoombas, goombas, koopas, koopa shells, buzzy beetle shellmits, spike top spinies, spiny shellmits, bloopers, cheap cheeps, piranha plants, piranha plant fireballs, monty moles, rocky wrenches, wrenches, hammer bros, hammers, chain chomp spikes, spike balls, wigglers, potoos, bombs, dry bones, bones, fish bones, magic koopas, pokies, bowser fire, bowser junior fire, mecha koopas, mecha koopa bullets, lack of two, fire clown car fireballs, morton fire, burner fire, bullet bells, cannonballs, key Peace, peace Witches, Pals, Springs, and finally, Firebar Fire. Phew, that was a lot. Many of these Yoshis can spit out again to either move them like the power-ups, or use as his own projectiles like fire or shells. With just how much Yoshi can eat and move around, he can be extremely useful in many different level types. Puzzles, speedruns, fast parkour, and even works great for traditional levels. Yoshi is one of the most versatile items here, which is super important. He's also always nice to control as well, and is overall just a great item for building. Also, a weird thing about Yoshi is that you can actually place keys in them, and if they hatch, they get a key spawn instead, which is pretty cool. I'm interested in talking about Yoshi a bit more in the future, but for now, he's an incredibly useful item. But it's time to decide which order they go in, which one is better. Again, Mario U gets the Flutter Jump and Ground Pound, however this time Mario World Yoshi has something to make up for this, being that his tongue will actually go through walls. In my opinion, the tongue going through walls is much more helpful as it can allow you for some more secret collecting or puzzle solving scenarios. So I'm placing Mario U Yoshi at 4th place, while Mario World will take 3rd. And with that, we've officially made it to the top 2, and I've decided this would work best as another combined segment. The top two equivalent items in Super Mario Maker 2 are easily the Shelmet and the Spiny Shelmet. Besides the Koopa car, these two were the easiest to rank, as they're just so incredibly helpful. For one, they both act as helmets for Mario, which will block and bounce enemies around with the Shelmet, and will kill enemies with the Spiny one. Spiny Shelmets can also break most breakable blocks as well. If they're used to jump into saws from below, you will also get knocked back, which can lead to collecting some cool secrets like this, or maybe having additional challenges like this. Now this sounds great and all, but why are these so far at the top? Well, it's simply because they're placeable shells. These items are by far the most useful contraption making items on this list, and there's a high chance you've used them in making contraptions before as well. Having them be able to be activated by hitting a spring, or being shot by a bill blaster is so incredibly helpful. Using them, things like on-off switchers become possible. Since they can break bricks and activate most things like question mark blocks, pals, and on-off switches, they're useful for nearly any sort of complex device. This makes them pretty much helpful in all level types. But with that said, which shellmet is better? I'm going to give the runner-up to the spiny shellmet. 
While yes, this does have more abilities like hurting enemies and breaking bricks while worn, these aren't as helpful as some of the special things that normal variant can do, which we'll get into in a second. The abilities are still helpful for some levels though, it's just the normal one is more versatile. The normal shellman, if shot by a bill blaster, is able to be ridden on like a buzzy beetle with wings, which can lead to some interesting courses on its own, but it also has the nice thing of being able to be jumped on, which makes it good for kaizo levels with shell jumps. I have a video about more tips and tricks on using these two, plus a dry bone shell, so a card is linked at the top if you're interested in more tips on shells. But for those differences, the spiny shell gets second place, and our number one spot goes to the normal shellmet. But anyways, that's it for this video. Which of these 22 items is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Like I said, this list was extremely hard to put together, but if you disagree, that's okay as well. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, and maybe even subscribe for more on Mario Maker 2 and anything else Nintendo Switch. Links to my Twitter and Discord server are in the description. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. And also, happy birthday to Mario Maker 2! This is its one year anniversary.